Hi everyone, so in this part we're going to go over two different labs to experiment different heap feng shui techniques. The first one will be about experimenting the feng shui using k enlistments and the second one will be about using name pipes. Okay, let's get started. So if you have enabled verifier previously, you'll have to make sure to disable it from now on because verifier can change the memory layout. And because we are going to focus on exploitation, we want the memory to be unmodified compared to real world scenario. And so in the target VM, you can use the verifier command to disable it on the tm.sys driver, and then you have to reboot the VM. And alternatively, you should be able to restore a snapshot if you created one earlier in the course. As mentioned previously, we initially investigated using k enlistment for the Feng Shui, and so we said it's not efficient in practice. But on purpose, we are going to write the code to do it, and then we will see why it doesn't work. We think it is useful to show the whole process because this is usually what you have to do. You generally don't know in advance what is going to work versus not. But the whole point about testing the easy stuff first is that you don't have to reverse engineer much and it is always good to confirm that other things are sane. Also, we know we won't be able to use the key enlistment for the replacement chunk because we wouldn't control the data, especially the flink pointer. But it is good to test as a first attempt. One thing to note is that in this lab, we're not going to take into account the delayed free mitigation. And the main reason for that is that we're going to be manipulating many k enlistments. And so we are going to free many of them. And so in practice, the delayed free list is going to be flushed anyway. And so we won't provide code to deal with the delayed free mechanism yet. And we will deal with it later in the course. So the goal of this lab is to create holes of size k enlistment using k enlistments themselves. And then we're going to fill these holes with new k enlistments that we would suppose would be our race condition enlistments. And so once we've done that, we will be able to inspect the memory to understand why it is not an ideal way for creating holes. In order to locate the k enlistments in memory, we can use the bang pull find command which allows you to specify a tag to look for. So if we use bang pull find tmen, it will find all the memory chunks that contain k enlistment structures. However, this command is quite slow. So another way is to use breakpoints to locate when certain k enlistments are allocated in, in order to locate certain areas in memory and then just browse adjacent areas to find more of them. So in this case, we can use the bang pull command and specify an address to look for. And so at the bottom, we provide the breakpoint you can use to log all the k enlistments allocations. And we generally advise you to use the sxd sse command beforehand. And so this sxd sse command allows you to disable single step exceptions, because for some reason, when you enable a breakpoint like this and print out the data, it will print a warning about the single step exception, which then interweaves with the actual data you want to be printed out. And then it's really hard to read. So you can basically tell a winbag to disable handling this type of exception, and then it won't print it. This is the kind of output we can get from WinBag. And you can see that initially the layout looks good. All of our k enlistments are adjacent. As you can see, the TMEN tag, and they are all of size 240 hex bytes. And then we create the holes and we analyze the memory. And you can also try to reallocate the holes, but without reading notification from the resource manager. And it should be fine. As you can see, allocated free, allocated free, allocated free and all the allocated ones are TMEN tag, so denoting a key enlistment. And finally, we can try the same, but this time we also read notifications from the resource manager, and we should see that the layout is quite random. Here we can see that we have the TM enlistment, the TMEN again, and in between we have the actual notification chunks, the TMFN, and so, yeah, it's not what we want. And the other thing we can see is that not only we have 240 hex byte chunks for the normal k enlistments, but we also have 290 hex byte chunks, as you can see here and here, 
And actually, if you think about it, 290 is actually 240 plus 50. So it's basically a coalescing between a, an enhancement chunk and a notification chunk. So yeah, the layout is not what we want. So the first thing we want to check is that our target VM doesn't have verifier enabled. And so with Control M, we can look at the snapshots. So we can see I had enabled verifier in the latest one. This one doesn't have it. Uh, I just want to show you how that you can also check that from the command line as well. So we can see that have you executed verifier query settings and that nothing is ticked and that the verifier drivers is none. So there is nothing. Now let's have a look at the actual code for the lab. We're interested in the enlistment spray in the Feng Shui section. So we can look at the enlistment spray.c. So we can see a lot of things that we've seen already. Um, there is a wrapper around create thread that takes the function to be executed in the new thread as well as the argument to pass that function. And again, it's called x create thread with the x prefix. Then we have the helper function that we've seen already. So we have the get notification resource manager function that is called to retrieve a notification from the resource manager and the one that loops over all of them to read uh, up to max attempts. There is a new function that also calls get notification resource manager, but this time it's actually to drain all the notifications without printing anything. The idea is we're gonna drain either up to the count number, or if we pass minus one, it's gonna basically drain all the notifications and it's gonna stop when the timeout expires without any notification being available. And then we have the main function. So we can see handles for different objects. We have three transactions. The first one will be alternated with the second one. And once we've created the holes, we'll have a third transaction that we can use to replace the holes. And we'll have a set of enlistments for each transaction, each having the same count, which is a 1000 hex, so 4K uh, total uh, enlistments per transaction. Then we have the instructions of the lab. So the goal is to spray uh, K enlistment structures and have alternating K enlistment structures being spread from two transactions. Free one set of K enlistment from one of the transactions and leave the other intact and then observe the resulting holes, even though it's not going to be ideal, as we'll see. So then we have all the objects that we need to have initialized, like transaction manager, the resource manager, so we can actually do stuff. So the goal is going to be to create two transactions by calling create transaction and then spray enlistments by calling create enlistment on both uh, sets in order to have an alternating spray. Once we've done that, we see there is a call to create transaction on the third transaction. At this state, we should be able to identify all the key enlistments being spread in an adjacency layout. And so you should be able to use either bank pool or bank pool find command to, to find them. And then the goal is going to be to actually free the enlistments from transaction number two. So we provide code to actually um, change the state of the enlistments from the set B, so associated with transaction two. And the goal is going to be to uh, prepare complete and to commit complete them as well. And so at that state, you should be able to uh, see that the enlistments of transaction number two are freed. And so you should be able to analyze the layout and see some holes. So hopefully you get some allocated K enlistments adjacent to some K enlistment size holes. And so then we provide code to actually refill the holes with new K enlistments associated with transaction number three. And then you should be able to analyze the layout. So feel free to play with the actual drain notification function, because as we said, depending on if you actually read the notifications, you should see differences in the actual layout. Okay, now it's your turn.